So as we're talk of, talking about using Canvas for little kids, specifically K through two, although if you're watching this video and you've got older kids, that's fine with me. Simplifying works for everybody. As we're talking about that, it comes to me that we need to use a button-based homepage. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, how to make one, that's what this video is for. Stay tuned. So why am I minding your business anyway and asking you to use buttons for your little kids? Well, I can think of three top reasons. One of them, Canvas LMS was originally a college product. It's only been in like the last few years that a lot of K through 12 districts have adopted it. I mean, it's it's like gangbusters everywhere. It's the number one LMS that I hear about. Um, I don't know what their market share is and I don't work for them, <laughs> but uh, originally it was a college product. So when you're taking that down all the way to your primary grade students, you've got to make some changes to make it more functional for them. There are, again, too many options for little kids. Do I click this button? Do I do that? Do I go to a month? Do I do whatever? And so if we can give them a very visual, symbolic representation of where they need to go, it's going to help your little kids. It's also going to help struggling readers. So as you look at the tips I give in this video, just think about how this is going to help frame it for your little kids. Same tools, same capabilities in Canvas, but how can I frame it for my little kids differently? So we're going to need to do some setup before we actually button. So I'm going to call this before the buttons. And so I'm going to go to actually pages. I would normally be making these in a module, but I really don't want this page for anything later. So I'm just going to go to new page and I'm going to call this not my home page, but it is for you. You know what? Let's call it button based home page. I don't know if that's small for y'all or just me. So let me make, there we go. It was shrunken. It was a shrunken head for a little bit. Now I'm going to recommend that before we even put any buttons or any icons or images or anything on there, that if most parents and most students, you've got little kids, so let's think about their parents as being the ones that are kind of the gateway to Canvas at home. If they're gonna be viewing this on a device such as a phone or a tablet, think about how that screen is not so big. And also think about how sometimes things don't line up properly in Canvas. So what I always recommend to teachers I work with is just that you add a table and you make it a one by however many. Now that's not what all my fellow friends in Canvas say to do, but that's what I like because that way nobody has to know that you're supposed to scroll over to see another button. It works beautifully on a phone or whatever. It's, it's going to be our version of responsive. And so I make it a one by one and that way I know it's going to fit on any size device. And I'm going to, it used to be long and skinny when you did that, but now it's not. So now I have a place for six buttons. When I actually save this, the boxes around the buttons, you can go back and tweak and see if you want to get rid of like the, the outline of the table. But I get it set up with a new page. I name it what I'm going to name it. So welcome to Miss Lolly's class. Welcome to my homepage. Welcome kindergartners, whatever you want to call it. I get that ready. And then I set up a table. I'll show you how to, I will try to remind myself, I'll show you how to uh, set this as your homepage when we're done as well so that it's the first thing kids land on when they come into your class. So I'm going to go ahead and say save. You can save and publish if this were ready. And you know what? No one's in this course. I'll go ahead and save and publish. And you'll notice I just have a blank template right there, which I'm going to go back into edit. But I just wanted to make sure you got the page set up and a place to put your buttons so that they will hopefully line up properly. So we'll talk about in the next little segment different kinds of buttons you can put in. We mentioned a few minutes ago that little kids or struggling readers, visuals help them. And so um, I want to show you just how to be really basic and grab some visuals that we can then link in another step. So one tool that my little, my primary teachers go crazy over is um, Seesaw. So I'm going to go to Seesaw, but I'm not going to type Seesaw.me. I'm going to say Seesaw logo, and I'm just going to go grab one. Hopefully that's okay. They'll be happy I'm referring somebody to their course. And you want to just kind of pay attention to if you're going to do all long and skinny buttons, then try to make your logos a longer button too. Otherwise, it's going to line up weird. Like this one that I'm hovering over here is square. This one's more rectangular. I want to grab the rectangular one for a certain reason. I can tell because it has a checkerboard pattern in the background that this is going to come in transparent, which is nice if you decide in a later video of mine, I'm going to show you how to make Canvas cute. And if you decide you want to have a colorful homepage, you would want this to stand out against the color and not just have a white box. So all that to say, I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy image. You can't do that with images off your, just off your hard drive or anything, but you can do it with other internet based images. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, click in my first box in the table, and then just paste that in. And then I can resize it. Always drag from the corners. You don't want to squish it up and do anything crazy. And you can center it, whatever. Guys, this is not going to be a complete, beautiful homepage. <laughs> no judgment on that. But anyway, that's how you can just get a logo-based button. We're going to talk about how you can make your own buttons, too. And you could keep going with this. ABC, yeah, ABC mouse, 
whatever it is you want to link to if you want to get the icon if they know that icon grab it if not I'm gonna show you something else you can do so say what you want to link to is not a product or a tool that has a logo say you just want to link your lunch schedule or something like that we're gonna to go to a website called the button factory and it's been bought by click minded so really I could just say click minded here but if you scroll down because I first thought it disappeared <laughs> and then I rediscovered it but you scroll down the page and you just literally type a word. So I'm gonna type something like lunch calendar, specials schedule, whatever you wanna call it. You can change options on it like font and colors. And I typically like, there's one called, I think caviar is what I usually use. Yes, I like that one. And um, it says fit to text, but I like my buttons to all look similar. So I'm gonna do fixed. And I have found that 250 is a good number for most applications that I've used. So all my buttons, if I can, kind of work within that size will all be the same size and over to the right you will see you can either do rounded or fully curved like more like a like a capsule looking button you can make them unicolored or gradient gradient to me is too much so but I do like bicolored that's a relatively new feature but I'm just going to leave it at unicolored you can color it whatever you want make it as tacky as you want now I would recommend if we're talking about things that make your web page accessible and then you do some color like this that no one can read that might be a bad idea, but the orange, I think the white stands out pretty well. And then you can add a border or a shadow or whatever you want to do. Shadow kind of makes it look more buttony. And I think I usually go up to four and see how that looks like a clickable button. So cute. And you can change the orientation. So you can play with that as much as you want. All you do to grab it is you right click and copy image. Same as we did before. I'm going to go back to my home page, and now this is my second button. Now, you can reorder these however you want. Remember, we're not going for cutesy. You can also have some kind of banner across the top that you put. Maybe you have a wider um, table cell at the very top that you can play with. All your table properties are here. We're not going to get into all that in this video, but you've got table properties you can mess with. If you just want to keep it simple, this is your simple page. We're going to talk in the next segment about how you can now make these buttons actually do something, work, go somewhere. I'm going to seem like I'm going out of, out of order in this video, but that's on purpose. So I'm going to start with this button. When I click that button, it will highlight in blue. And then all the things I can link it to that are not a site, like things within Canvas I might want to link to, are all over here to the right. So I can link it to a page, an assignment, a quiz, blah, 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 blah. I can link it to a file, or I can upload and link it to an image, okay? So just to keep it simple, I'm going to say that I want to link this to a page that has my lunch calendar on it. Sure, I'm pretending. If it has a blink, you've made a link, okay? Did you see that yellow blink at me? That means if it does a link, I forgot how I used to say that. <laughs> if it makes a blink, you have a link. So when you see that blink yellow, it means it has accepted your link and that's ready to go. Now for Seesaw, which is going out to an outside site, we're gonna use the traditional link button that you've used for your whole life since you've been using the internet. And I would just then go to Seesaw, they would still have to probably log in, but I'm going to grab that login. I'm going to come back here, and this is highlighted blue. I just come up to the link, and I paste it. If you see a blink, you have a link. That's what I used to say. <laughs> and now, if I were to save this, those buttons actually go somewhere that they're supposed to go, and I can tell by hovering. You see how this little link comes down to the bottom? If I hover here, it tells me it's going to Seesaw. If I hover right here, it tells me it's going to a page in you know, within Canvas. So you can just keep on rocking and rolling with that. Yours will look a lot better than mine. I would love for you to actually share with me, like tweet me at Susie Lolly. I'm really easy to find. But, you know, tweet me and say, hey, Susie, I took your terrible, <laughs> ugly homepage and I made it cute, but thank you for sharing the directions. I would love for you to do that. And y'all, it was either record outside or record with the toddler in the house. So I apologize for all of God's creatures and all of the automobiles that have chosen to make their debut during this video. I hope you can hear it anyway. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you one last thing, which is you've done this great page that's way better looking than mine, and you are ready to share it with the world via making it your home page so that when somebody clicks home, they will come to this page. So if you'll go to the three dots up in the top right corner, if you're actually on the page, go to the three dots and you see where it says use this front page. Now, let's see, when I go home, that is my front page, but it's not set here yet. I actually have to go into settings. I'm going to show you how to do that. So right here on the side, even though I've said that's the front page, I have not told Canvas that I want a page to be my home page. I've said I want a module. So right here where it says choose home page, you see how I have it set on modules? Instead, you can choose your page's front page, and it'll actually let you set it right there if you had not. 
So I don't really want to do that, but that is, um, I'll do it just for you, I guess. But when I click save and anyone arrives in my course, they're going to see this. I'll set mine back in a minute because that'll drive me crazy. But I hope this helped. Again, we're just trying to make Canvas accessible for little kids. The tools are awesome and anybody can use them, but how can we make them accessible? I hope this has helped. If you didn't watch my first video, it's in the playlist, so go back and watch it. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time, so if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that and all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Susie Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.